How are you getting on then, Jan? Grand, grand. <laughs> You're in good form. Yeah, been terrible. It's been a very, very busy year for you. It's kind of this is always. <clears throat> this time of the year, I always actually end up sitting up to chat. <laughs> Probably, you know, That's right, having, having, a chat, yeah. having a chat, having a chat, up the year, <clears throat> and it's been a great year. It's been fantastic, and, and things have gone very well in the business and in overall, you know, because there's been a bit of a lift in the country, as people would say, and uh, for the theatre world and everything else, it's great. Yeah, and RT allowed you to indulge your passion for music, didn't yeah. you, in the TV series? That was a great one this year. We were kind of plugging at that for two years ago with Seth and Dave Heffernan. Um, for people out there who wouldn't know Dave, Dave was one of the most, uh, I suppose, iconic producers of music in RT for the last 30 years or more. He started off uh, presenting a show back in the 70s, uh, early 80s, and then went on to produce with his brother some of the biggest music programs. So Dave and myself got together about uh, two years ago, I think it was, with, with Joe Dolan, uh, <clears throat> a documentary we were doing on Joe Dolan, and I was doing some uh, con contributing parts on the documentary. and. That program involved a lot of archive, and that was kind of gave Dave the idea. And he came to me about, Look, would you be interested in sitting down and looking through it? So we did, and we put a whole proposal together, and it took about a year or so. And then RT said this year we'll do it. So we spent the early part of this year sifting through the, the archives in RT. It was fantastic, there was great stuff there, and putting the show together over the summer. Now, obviously, lots jumped out at you, but was there anything in particular that you went, ah, it's hard to know? There was quite a few. I met, like, I could go through, there was a, there was a great clip. Um, uh, funny enough, we were working in the studio only a few days after Bill Early had died, and it was a fantastic clip we found of Bill. And I didn't realise that he was a journalist before a sports person. You know what I mean? I always thought he was. I just kind of grew up with Bill Early being involved in sports, yeah, most people, like yeah. most people. But this piece came from the sixties, where he was doing a, a documentary on an Irish show band down in Cove, and uh, it was hilarious. I don't know what they were called. I can't remember. It. It's a few months since I've seen the clip now, but they come off a bus and he was saying, oh, yeah, and here now a new, uh, new bunch of lads trying to make their way, they've invested £4,000 in a bus and equipment, and, and the whole time the clip, the drummer just laid back, <laughs> <laughs> bored beyond belief, and he said he could, have, he could have got a better clip than that, though. but it was a very, very funny piece, and to hear him mm. chatting away, <coughs> there was a famous Tom Waits piece I was telling everyone about, a fantastic piece of music. And he's a great musician, I'm a huge fan, but it was uh, after he did a show in 1981 in the Olympia and Gay Byrne was, had him in on the Late Late Show. And you have to understand, Gay Byrne never used the talkback systems in the year. He wouldn't do it, it was always, it just it was his way of presenting. So when things went wrong, they, he had no way of communicating with above, you know what I mean? So he had this big clunky phone the size of an old phone, and it comes back after the ad break, he's there. No, there's no sign of him yet. You're thinking, this is live television. He's, in, he's got the next artist and he can't find him anywhere in the studio. And he said, no, I don't know where he is. <laughs> oh, hang on, he's coming now. So he put down the phone, he does the introduction, and then Tom Waits goes over and plays the piece, which was amazing. And then Tom Waits gets up to walk away. And Gabe Orton comes running over and says, no, no, sit down now, we have a chat. And he's going, well, i got to go. <laughs> You're looking at it going, oh my god, I can't believe this is like <laughs> But so he, they, the interview was quite short, and uh, but what we found out, we got in touch with one of the flow managers that worked on the program. What we found out was Tom Waits, his wife was in the aisle, and uh, he was just going over to her. It was quite a kind of cool, actually. And cute. Yeah. So he was just uh, didn't want her to be on her own, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oblivious to the rest. Of it. Uh, let's hear another clip. Hello there. Hello there. You do I that to the iconic. I did not. Somebody, if you look it up, some other fella did it. And it's very, very, my kids were like, "Said Dad, you're not going to believe." Did you, did you hear the internet recently? I was no, and they played it to me. It's very, very funny. It's very funny. Some guys matched it together. That's really good. How do you feel about the fact that you now have competition in the comedy world from, of all people, although maybe it doesn't come as a surprise, Willie O'D. I did. I'm sorry, I've been away for the last time. I'm just, no, I didn't hear this. Willie was the main guest on the Mario Rosenstock comedy show last night. No way. He was. He did stand up. But I think Willie's a very funny guy. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> so did Mario, obviously. <laughs> No, I mean, I, I don't know, is he, is, he, is he intentionally funny? <laughs> oh, do you know? But he is very smart. He's well, a, he's he was standing cool. up, he was actually doing it in front of an audience and doing jokes in the whole nine yards. Wow. 
That's I'm telling fantastic. you. Fantastic. Huh? I'm going to look that up on the bar. Oh, there, yeah. you, have to, you have to. It's really, really we funny. Might, we might go on tour together. Was <laughs> that a week, would you imagine? <laughs> oh, stop. What? <laughs> to be some crack, wouldn't it? Oh, my God. <laughs> However many nights you can do at UCH on your own. Could you imagine <laughs> yourself and Willie? <laughs> Um, selfie is the is the it's show. It's the show. Out. Actually, we're going. We were in UCH already last year, so we're doing a return, and, and actually, it's, it's selling very, very strong at the moment. We're near the end of end of January, and it's probably going to be the last time the show will be around because uh, I have a very hectic year next year, and it's going to be running me right up to near the end of the year next year already booked in. So really? I can't see a return journey back for the show. So this will probably be the last time we get in. With it. Um, which is great. It's a fantastic uh, complaint to have, yeah. and it's great. I also love playing the UCH and system. You know that new lighting system and everything. It's just yeah, it's great. And yeah. the sound system is amazing. It's really yeah. it, it makes it more intimate and warmer actually. Yeah, yeah. I, I love the fact you call the show selfie, but it's awesome. <laughs> it, is, it is the world we're in now, isn't it? Well, it is. I mean, yeah. You, I mean, so look, I can't get away from it. Uh, we, even during the show, people were trying to get selfies. Which, <laughs> it's crazy. And I did a, I, I did a show last night with Daniel O'Donnell actually up in Wicklow. Uh, we filmed it for Stephen's Night, and uh, that was just demented with selfies. But I managed to squeeze a few into the TV shows. So. <laughs> That's right. Daniel's been touring around, isn't he, with his UTV yeah. Ireland? And he was on Strictly. And Strictly and all I say. He's had a huge year. Yeah. And uh, I, I've known Daniel for years. And Magella, of course, I, I practically grew up in my house. When I was a kid, she was in Turles, and she was would have been very friendly with my sister. Um, so we have strong connections there uh, with the gang. So, I, yeah, they're doing a special show for Stephen's Night, so they invited me up to do a spot on it. And, Fantastic. And, uh, we had great crack last night up, up in uh, Wicklow. It was great yeah. filming. Yeah. Um, what about uh, the film opportunities next year with Troy Studios coming to Limerick? I think it's a, I think it's a very, very positive thing for Limerick. I mean, uh, it's, it's huge. I, I, I know everyone knows that the film industry. I think people a lot of time talk about the film industry as glamorous and all this. It's far from that. But one thing it is, is very, very good for local community. Um, we had that when we were doing, let's say, Killing Scully, for example, which is a very low-budget um, seven-part TV series, not on the scale of what you're talking about there. And yet we used to book out all the colleges in the Castle Oaks for three months at a time, shops, you know, so on and so forth, and, and construction materials and everything around. Um, we used to buy as much as we could locally and hire local people to do extras, all that kind of stuff. It was great. And then you're paying location fees and all that kind of thing. Uh, and local actors as well bring them in. So if you can imagine something the scale of that, which was which was quite small, uh, and take it up to a large movie and stuff like that, it's it's going to be huge for the, the local economy. And I, I think it's brilliant. Mm. And I think it's a great location. We we I I to claim to fame. We were the first to film out there, <laughs> but we filmed all Killer Scully there. In, yes. in the, of course, we we built the sets in the in the warehouses there. Um, they'll probably do a lot more professional job than we did, but the, oh, but the end result, no, in the sense of the building and the structure, oh, but right. the, the end result, we, we got a great result out of there. It was a fantastic location. You were, it was, it's very rare to find a space as big as that. Yeah. Where we were, I think the canteen alone of the old Dell factory, we built all our sets in there. That was a 10,000 square foot space. The two bigger stages, which are there, are 70,000 foot each. So that'll give you the scale of what they're doing. We built three sets in there, and we built them. T t uh, permanently like we were able to move walls and stuff so instead of having to build a set and strip it down and build another set we built all three in the one place and they just moved the cameras around us and the lighting overhead right. and it was a fantastic facility for us to do it and, and it served us great there yeah. so hopefully uh, that you know it, hopefully it will come off I'm sure it will I know I've been talking to people in the industry everyone's very very hopeful I know there's been a couple of directors down Reiki and from Los Angeles looking at various big movies to go in there um, so hopefully one of them will, will sign off on it soon. I haven't heard of that yet, but I know it will. The right people are working behind the case. Mm. And I think Fair Play to Limerick County Council, uh, they've done a great thing. I know they're taking a lot of it on board. Uh, it's a brave move. But if it works, and it should work, it's going to be a fantastic thing for the city. I mean, you've shown a great commitment to Limerick and the locality, and you have your offices here, and, and all of that. Does that remain manageable for you, or would it be easier for you to be in Dublin? Well, look, of course it's easier to be in Dublin, because that's the centre of the film industry in Ireland. For, you know, you, they, they talk about, that's breaking down a bit. They used to talk before about uh, Limerick, Ardmore, Limerick and, or Dublin and Ardmore, sorry. Uh, and... Uh, there was a lot of things going on there with unions and all sorts of things with transport and hiring, hiring guys and all sorts of crazy stuff that used to try and keep the business up there. So that's kind of breaking down now, which is a good thing. And uh, TG Cahart did it, for example, the studios up in Galway did it. And they're, they're starting to broaden the whole thing out a bit more. So it's great. But I'd much prefer to be down in Limerick working than in Dublin, personally. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm always banging on about the talent that we have in, in the Limerick area. And it is really true, isn't it, pal? I mean, it's not just me saying No, it's no, it's not. I mean, like, we founded filming and, and looking for... 
uh, extras looking for actors that would what you call special extras, which is act, uh, extras that have a couple of lines, and you still need people to deliver that for you. You know what I mean? And we had fantastic talent and professional actors here. Um, if you look back to Killer Scully and Matty and all that, we tried to use, I'd say, eighty percent was local actors, yeah. and they were all fantastically talented, brilliant yeah. people. So, what do you have uh, planned for next year? I and mean, how can it be busier than twenty fifteen? Oh God! Well, I have two films back to back. One, the first one starting actually this week, we're starting, uh, casting in Dublin and working there. That's starting in February uh, in between London and Dublin, or, or actually Ireland. I don't think we'll be filming in Dublin, somewhere in the countryside. And uh, that's the first one. There's another one then after that, which is coming together at the moment. There's a TV show for Dublin for RT. And I was talking to the guys before I came in here. BBC would shoot a, shoot a series, start a series next year there with BBC, which I'm hoping to drag them over here and film location stuff here in Limerick. Oh, fantastic. Uh, which, is the, which is my ultimate plan. And, and Brilliant. Which, until we decide yet what the, the final format of the, the programme is, whether it's going to be all on location, which means shipped a whole lot over from London to here, or it's going to be like the Father Ted format, which is studio-based and ex, uh, exteriors, which are um, uh, shot in the countryside. And when you were getting going, I mean, did you ever think to yourself, right, I'm going to have to be a comedian, an actor, a businessman, an artist, a director? All of those things would be part of Pat Short's career. I think you, you kind of grow into things, if you know what I mean. You start off music, then ended up in comedy, then up doing a couple of videos with Don't Believe Us. I got a love for filming and making stuff. I really got excited about it. And uh, then I got a chance to, when... Kilo Scully came about to, to do uh, my own big production and it was quite scary but I got some great people who were professional to come in with me on it and, and uh, do the stuff that I had to do but, and we made it happen but it was very very exciting for a good few years and running around there doing that. Um, a bit of a lull came in the whole industry then just through the crash and everything else but it's back up and running again and, we, and I, during that period I, I went to the UK and started doing a lot of work over there it takes a couple of years to get things off the ground so here we are now back filming again. And, <clears throat> sorry, going back to your question, I suppose I, and the reason I was saying it's staggering it like that is because one thing kind of grows onto another. Yeah, I, I recently worked with Jared Barrett, um, people would know him from Pilgrim Hill, that film he did, he's done a massive one with uh, Charisse Turan in America. I just shot a, a drama with him for TV3, which should be out in the new year. And uh, he's an incredible character. He's a young guy, I think he's only about 28 from this store down around there. And he's the same, and now he's doing major Hollywood movies and stuff. And he's just. You know, he started off doing a bit of work. I was I did Marion Finucane show last week, and Marion says you worked with Jared. I said yeah. She said he was an intern here <laughs> on the show with them, and she said he was just incredible. Yeah. You know, so again, he's now running his own company, writing. He's got three or four major movies on the on the go for next year, and that, and it's fantastic to see that. You know, do you embrace the fame? Do you like being recognised on the street and all of that, or what's it like in Limerick for you? Well, I you know Limerick people <clears throat> and Castle Conway, they, they leave you alone because they know me. They see me around a lot. Do you know what I mean? Um, but it is look. It's part of the industry. I don't. I don't particularly like being uh, approached all the time. But then you, you, you're out there, you know. So, and I, I also know it takes a lot for someone to come up and say hello to you, and you should be nice as a result of that. Do you know what I mean? You, should, you know, you gotta appreciate that. And make sure people aren't upset. Or, but you know, by telling someone go away, you could upset someone. So I'm conscious of that as well. So you, you gotta be, you gotta be nice to people, and it's and uh, it's a great thing to be. For them to be following you anyway, you know that's that's my business. That's keep me going. So. <laughs> Are you impressed that um, I wasn't drunk after come wine and dine? Oh, I see the tie is off. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to you on the way and said, uh, there'll be a lot of things slipping along with you. <laughs> And the wine tasting, you had, it, you had it perfectly taken out of the room before I got here. Oh, yes, oh, yes, yes definitely, definitely. No temptation. So, some tickets still available for selfie at UCH? Yeah, on UCH on the 20th of January. I think it's 20th, is it? Yeah, 20, I think 20, it is. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. people can get that through UCH.ie or the box office there. And they say, you will get some sort of break then over Christmas? Oh, yeah, God, I always take Christmas yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I stop on the 20th and, and the rest of the year is mad busy for me. I'm back out to Australia and I'm back to New Zealand and all over America as well so and uh, most of the filming will be in London for the next while as well so as a result of that um, I always take Christmas off and just don't go anywhere you know yeah because I mean family it's, it's ah, yeah. you know it's important it's nice to see them now and again <laughs>